see you. See you. I used to not believe in fortune. I used to be like, yo, it's 100% hard work. But at this point in my maturity, I've gotten to understand that fortune does play a small role, but mm -hmm. a role. For instance, it all depends on your perspective. Yeah. Like, I'm just lucky to have been born here, as an example. Or, sure. And if you're not born here, to immigrate to the States, where you even have a landscape yeah. where you can have a rags to riches kind of story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the system is rigged. Yes, there's you know, disadvantages, but if you get too hung up on those, as I feel pop culture likes to do, there's sure. like a lot of kind of victimization and or co-misery, it's easier. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was fortunate to have my parents instill in me the opposite kind of attitude where it's like, yo, yeah, you come from the dirt, but that's where diamonds are happened for you, not to you. That's right. So yeah, I, uh, after high school, got a job working as a doorman and that changed a lot for me because I was exposed all of a sudden. Proximity is super powerful. Yep. Uh, you know, I came from a background where I didn't know any other career path other than what my folks had taught me, which was, you know, highly educated career paths. But when I stepped into being a doorman, I was exposed to people doing all kinds of crazy shit for a living and making a lot more money than I thought the most successful people were making. You got it. Right? So like at that point, like I thought 100 grand was like everything and not only doctors, lawyers, engineers could get there. Mm. I later stepped into a role while being a doorman where I saw professional dating coaches, rock climbers, hmm. America's Next Top Model, the founders of Rap Genius, founders of Voxy, wow. um, Pastor Carl Lentz from Hillsong yeah. worked there Love or him. lived there. Yeah. Um, I mean, just so many career paths. And I was fortunate to be there every day of the week, five, hmm. five or six days a week. And it didn't take that long until I felt like, you know what, there's nothing that these people have. Yeah in terms of natural abilities that I feel I don't have. Hmm. And so, you know, I went and... Was that through observation or were that, was that through, did you have a lot of conversations with people as they would come in and out and get to know these people? Like it was observation and installation, Got meaning it. instilled into me from certain people. I do believe that we're blessed every once in a while to find someone yeah. who takes an interest in helping you out yeah. for no other reason other than they see themselves in you. And wow. so there was one particular resident who kind of shared a similar background as That's me awesome. and he was like, yo, you're too smart to be behind the desk. Yep. And he taught me the value of time and, and like, yeah, that's something that we say a lot these days, time is money, blah, blah, blah. but I was working the graveyard shift, right, from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. That's all I had, it was nothing but time. And for me, I was just being paid hourly. It was no issue for me to just show up, sit on my ass, do my job, but like, for the most part, I was like, yeah, I need to show up for this amount of time, be idle if need be, sure. and then leave. And that's. Yeah. And when he taught me that you can activate time, and mm. there are things that you can do within a moment in time to extract more value, mm. that's something that, yeah, you can throw that up on a mis Instagram meme, but like <laughs> that, oh, yeah. the, the layers of depth has that's been, true. you know, I've really learned that in different levels since yeah. then. I did the best I could. I did a lot of like free theater in the city. Yeah. My parents wouldn't even see my apartment because they were just so like, just, it was just <laughs> beside themselves that I would move to New York City with no money, no job yeah. to try to be an actor, yeah, yeah. which to them meant like prostitute. And moved to New York from, was it from Colorado? Or yeah, or? that's it. Yeah, because my parents lived in Colorado then. Okay. But I'd yeah. gone to college in upstate New York. Okay. And I grew up outside Boston and I was born in Houston. Okay. Um, and so I came to the city. Uh, did that, didn't work out. I did a soap opera for a short period of time. I played Dr. Evan Walsh the fourth on As the World Turns. Awesome. Um, you can YouTube that, it's real. <laughs> uh, then they killed me, that's also there. How'd you die? I took a syringe to the heart as I was wrestling my grandmother, as I was holding was my family hostage in the hospital, totally waiting for a helicopter. Prob totally probable. To take me to the Caribbean <laughs> to uh, do my research in peace. <laughs> yeah, and then soaps were all like basically canceled. Um, awesome. That was 2000. Yeah, that was the beginning of 2008. And then I ran out of money, and I like hand modeled. I did random stuff That's to make awesome. ends meet. Um, and I had a friend who was like, "Listen, don't be a bartender. Don't be a waiter. Don't like do temp work. Yeah. Like don't move home. Once you move home, you'll never come back to New York. Sure. Like you're here now, which is a huge part of the battle for everyone else who's trying to come to New York. Mm -hmm. Right, just getting here. Like you're here. Yeah. 
Like get your real estate license. It's easy. The market's hot. Post ads on Craigslist. You'll meet someone on the street, sell them an apartment, rent them an apartment. Literally rent an apartment or two a month. All you have to do is point people in directions, <laughs> memorize scripts about what buildings have. Does it have a doorman? Does it have a pool? Does it yeah. have a gym? I do that stuff all the time, sure. acting anyway. Sure. Um, and pay your rent and then you'll have 28 days a month to do whatever you want. And I was like, fine, screw it. I'll do that. Real estate brokers are the absolute worst time. That sounds <laughs> awful, but I had no other options. Yeah. Um, cause it was that literally, or go home the next month. And I did that, rented my first apartment quickly made like 500 bucks or something, but mm -hmm. it still was like, holy shit. I can wake up in the morning, go and meet random strangers and then make money. But I don't really have to do anything else. Yeah. Like I don't provide the apartments, mm -hmm. like the apartments are there. Yeah. All I'm doing is connecting a person to another person, getting them to agree on a thing that they both kind of want anyway. Mm -hmm and you're gonna pay me for it? <laughs> like, that was like the wake up call for me where I was like, being a broker isn't a bad thing. It's actually hard to do sure. in order to convince someone to do something, Absolutely. but it is, um, but I, I just became addicted to it. Like yeah. I thought I was gonna act, that's what I was doing. Yeah. I, I thought I got into real estate to pay my bills so that I could continue to act. And what literally happened was the flip happened. I started like just wanting to do more real estate and not go to auditions and stand in line and like do free theater on the sidewalk on 55th street mm -hmm. to try to get someone to pay attention. Yep. Um, and then like literally that, yeah. So that day when I got in was the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. I feel like there needs to be either a documentary or a book on the stories of Dorman. Because like there's a crazy there's a crazy Yo. string of just like like we did an interview yesterday with John Henry you know John Henry yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. he's got that show Hustle on Vice yeah he was a doorman and he just saw people coming in and out and he was like you know these people are no different than me and and Absolutely. they had these levels of success you had in your mind like doctor lawyer you know all like the the things that you had to be to be successful mm -hmm. but he saw these people coming in and out that were one of them was a rock climber one of them was an artist one of them was an actress and. And through those relationships, one of which specifically just kind of told him like, man, like you're, you're built for so much more than this and mm -hmm. gave him an opportunity. And he launched a business from there um, doing dry cleaning, mobile dry cleaning, mm -hmm. which he picked up real quick, a, uh, a film production that was in town. And also next thing you know, he's doing every film production, all of the That's dry cleaning. Crazy. And now he's who he is. And, uh, but I gotta, I gotta believe there's probably a thousand insane dormant stories out there. Stories are salacious as oh, hell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell them. But I will say this, you know, being a doorman actually served me well in my HR capacity. Okay. Uh, and dealing in corporate America in general, because I, I was a doorman of a 200 unit building. Yeah. In those 200 units, you have probably 500 different personalities, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And you yourself, as a doorman, you have to adjust your personality yeah. to the person that you're interacting mm -hmm. with because the same rich fuck who, can we curse here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same rich, <laughs> the same rich fuck yeah. that walks by and wants to pretend you don't exist, yep. you can't interact with him the same way that the guy who wants to, you know, hang out with you and talk shit about the Knicks all day. Yeah. You have to adjust your personality to kind of serve everybody. Yeah. And I, I found that that skill really served me well. Oh, yeah. Especially in HR, but yep. in corporate America as well, as you're dealing with different personality types and learning how to read people. Yeah. I would, it, think, I would think, too, translating over into HR is just the realization that you have no idea what somebody is going through when they walk in the door. Correct. Like they could have just walked out of the worst situation ever or the best situation ever. So it's not judging someone like current state mm -hmm. based on not knowing anything that's going on in their life. Absolutely. And to be able to take that over into HR, because again, when employees walk in, you have no idea what's going on at home. You have no idea what's going on in their personal life. And it's a mix of pragmatism and empathy, mm -hmm. you know, because oh, a yeah. lot of HR people, they're a little too empathetic at bleeding heart. Sure. And then you have the uh, reverse who are just stone cold killers and yeah. just will fire anybody on the spot. Sure. You have to be able to have that mix and know when to turn which yeah. switch on. So I'm a uh, real estate investor. This is Stan Ginlin, by the way. I am Stan Ginlin, and uh, I'm a real estate investor. And uh, for the last couple of years, we've been mainly building houses all over the uh, South Carolina upstate. Uh, we flipped a lot of houses, we bought a lot of rental houses. And right now we're mainly focused on buying cash flowing assets in the entire Southeast region. And that includes mobile home parks, multifamily and single family portfolios. So that's our main business today.
My name is Dex Lipovich. Uh, some people don't even know the last name because they call me <laughs> Dex in the city uh, across all platforms. Luxury real estate broker and advisor here in New York City uh, with a specialization in predominantly Manhattan and especially in the micro niche of 57th Street Billionaires Row. Um, I sell a lot of properties similar to the, the building that you're seeing us in right now. Uh, it's very much so my brand. And I'm laser focused on uh, new development condominiums, uh, resale condominiums as well, um, a lot of the high rise stuff. And then um, focusing a little bit more on going into Brooklyn. I have a pitch mm -hmm. there later on today. Interesting. And uh, growing my influence along with you guys. Yeah, excellent. Jason Ciano, co founder, CEO of Saver Real Estate. Uh, comm traditional commercial real estate brokerage business uh, that I've evolved over the last eight years into uh, more of a national advisory firm. So one of my claim to fames, as you gentlemen know, is bringing Chipotle to New York. Uh, represent Starbucks, coffee, a lot of other very large companies. Uh, design and execute their expansion strategy. Uh, always started kind of New, New York Metro focused. Uh, now have a team in three different offices, Long Island, uh, Manhattan, and New Jersey, and uh, really pushing the national uh, advisory services. Represent a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, health, fitness, wellness companies, and advise them on all things scaling, essentially, and uh, real estate's kind of the center of that all.